I also see Deshaun Harper having a breakout game this game. You know, she she always have a great game. She always playing hard. So Alcorn will win the tip. Alcorn wearing their purple and gold. A&M Lady Bulldogs wearing their white with maroon. Lady Bulldogs coming into this game 8-9 and nine on the season. Looking to improve that record and go to 500 on the year. And we have a foul on the court. It's a travel called against Alcorn. And that was number 20. Tadriana Isler called with the travel. Hey, you know, last time we was here at the Elmore Gymnasium this past Saturday, you know, when we was playing the Southern Lady Jaguars, you know, 54 to 50, we lost. But, you know, they, the girls played a great game. You know, they couldn't clutch it at the end, but they still played great throughout the four quarters. I mean, they had a great all-around performance led by A&M. Lauren McKee had a great game. She put up a very, very clutch three-point shot. Ashlyn Dyson came up in the clutch as well. You saw Nigeria Jones play well, and they had a very, very great just all-around balanced game last time out. They just couldn't get the W, but I'm pretty sure tonight they're going to come in here. They're going to learn from their mistakes and get a big win here at Elmore Gymnasium. Oh, yeah, most definitely. I think the key word for this game is going to be hustle. Mm. That's what these Lady Bulldogs are known to be throughout each and every game, to hustle, get the boards, get the points, slow down the pace a little bit, and just play their own game. So, Josh, when you look at this Lady Bulldog team, what have you noticed that they've done well so far this season? I mean, with the head coach, Margaret Rich, I mean, she she scribes on defense. Like, they got better with their defensive game. You know, they're doing a lot more passing the ball, making, taking smart shots. So, I'm thinking she's doing a great job with, with their all-around all game, building their team chemistry. Yeah, I have to agree with you there, playing a great balanced attack. No one really stands out above the other. And the three ball by Jones is just off the mark. Um, Ashlyn Dotson can have a great game. McKee can have a great game. King and Pye can have a great game. They have anybody on their team that can honestly come out of nowhere and have a great performance any given night. And yeah, Red, I mean, that's what I mean, man. You know, you'll have – it don't matter. You don't. You wouldn't know. A team wouldn't know who will have a breakout game that day. So, you know, they got a lot of tough players on the team, man, and this is a great little Bulldog team. And we have a foul on the court, and at the free throw line is number 32, Jada Hargrove, coming out of Riverdale, Georgia, standing at 5'5", five five, the junior. First free throw attempt is just off, and she'll miss. It's right now over one from the free throw line. You know, we talk about just who in this Lady Bulldog team is going to, you know, play that leader role, play that ignition for these Lady Bulldogs to start up something. And, you know what I mean? When you got Dotson, who may be stopped at sometimes, you have Alexis Evans who comes off the bench, and she produces points, rebounds, and let's not forget blocks as well. And then you still have Natalie Collins, who just came back, Jamika Cobb, Nigeria Jones. You have so many great, talented players in these young ladies that you never know what night it can be for any of them. And, you know, Alexis Evans has a pretty nice touch from the free throw line. She shoots 83% from the free throw line. So if you want to put the ball in her hands to try and make clutch shots at the end, she is capable of doing that. Well, have you seen her in the post? The way she plays, she wants to get fouled so she can get the easy shots. Well, she's 6-3. I mean, what more could you want? Hey, sometimes they don't call fouls while you're in the post. Ashlyn Dotson at the free throw line now. Dotson this season at first took somewhat of a back seat to Evans, but ever since spike play began, she has really played out of her role more than anything and regained her starting position. But she's more than a respect of Coach Richards. Has a great face-up game this season. You alluded to it this year. She's really more so of a face-up, you know, low post type shooter that can really get points at will on offense. And she provides Alexis Evans a great offensive compliment compared to all the defense Evans brings in the low post. Oh, most definitely, most definitely. You know, she doesn't have the post agility moves, but when she's in there, though, she can throw it up, and it will go in there. If not nine times out of ten, it's a good, it's a still a good 80% chance. And almost stolen by AM. Cobb defending the point, number 15. Diamond Hall checking in for the Lady Braves. And these Lady Bulldogs are looking very feisty in this first quarter. And the rebound is no good. The putback was not successful. Pye with the rebound in transition. Jones is going to drive out to Harper. She had to pass down low to Dotson, but it was nearly tipped away. And AM trying to run out the clock now, trying to slow the pace. You know, Pye. Kenya Pye, she comes out of nowhere. Like, when 
when you need a rebound, when you need something to happen, she comes out of nowhere and pretty much helps her team out in that position. And Ashlyn Dotson with the beautiful low post finish as the three is no good by Alcorn and rebounded by Pye yet again in back-to-back -back possessions. And going back to what you said, Jalen, I mean, not only Pye, uh, you have Jamika Cobb. Like, she had a big game last game with on the rebound the ball under the basket. Most definitely, most definitely. I mean, you know, all these Lady Bulldogs play great. And, you know, you have your three-point sharpshooter in Natalie Collins, who's still trying to find her rhythm. But when she does, it's going to be dangerous for the opposing teams, fellas. Well, it was really big to have Collins come back because all season long she struggled with that injury on her right shooting hand. And she's been wearing a wrist brace all season long, but she slowly but surely recovered. And it was a great sign to see her come back and play for this team this season. And she's suited up, ready to go now, so she could come into the game as well for tonight. Second free throw attempt for Deshauna Harper is good. And it's now 8-3. to three. Bulldogs lead the Lady Braves. And it's a nice, comfortable lead. I mean, the Lady Bulldogs are playing very close up defense with these, with Alcorn State. And, you know, they're pretty much having their way in the rebounding category right now. Well, so far, Alcorn State has not really had a great season so far. They're number ninth in the conference. Head coach Courtney Pruitt trying to get the season turned around as quickly as possible, whereas Coach Richards for the past three years has made a really successful turnaround here for this Lady Bulldog basketball program. She goes from 2-26 and 26 to 11-18 and 18 to now 8-9 on the season and 5th in the swag. They're one of the most dangerous teams in the conference that can make a run at possibly a tournament title here in mid to late March as the season goes on. So she, to me... Should be coach of the should be the women's coach of the year for the SWAC. And you're right, Riz. I mean, the coach Marguerite, you know, she she got the team and she was going through the rebuilding process and she did a great job to turn the girls' season around. As Alexis Evans gets the easy finish down low, it's now ten to three, almost stolen again by A and M. Exactly. You know, just when you thought you can have a sigh of relief when Dawson gets out, you still have to worry about Evans. And it's another rebound for Alexis Evans. We have a foul on the court. And Evans, I mean, gosh, she's just so strong that it's hard to move her, as we just seen. Well, we know for a fact Coach Richards, she started to recruit more taller players, and that's led to some pretty good success this season. They're currently second in the conference in total defense right now, just behind Prairie View A&M. Average about the same amount of points given up per game on defense at around 61 to 62 per game. And that philosophy has paid off in dividends so far this season. Oh, definitely, Red, definitely. And, you know, with her coaching, you know, you know, when you first come in as a coach, you just can't take over a you just can't take over a team just so quick. It takes time to rebuild. It takes time to improve. It takes time to really know your players and really know what you can get out of them from their strengths to their weaknesses. And you're certainly right, Jalen. I mean, you have to build your chem your chemistry with your team, man. And, you know, that's what helps your team focus and win games more. Definitely, definitely. And the Lady Bulldogs right now having a great Success coming out the gate right now. It's another missed three from Alcorn. Nearly rebounded by Evans. And Alcorn couldn't get the put back. And number 15, Diamond Hall, misses it. The and Lady Braves cannot ooh. buy a shot right now. Ain't him playing great defense. It's almost stolen again. Man, it's so funny because you have, you have Davis down there. You know, she just down there not even jumping, man. She just grabbing the rebound. And we have a timeout on the court right now. The Lady Bulldogs lead the Lady Braves 13-3. Coach Richards loving what she sees out of her team. Let's see if we can kick up the momentum. I'm loving it. And with 4.30 to go in the first quarter, we'll be back with you in just a quick second. Yeah.
coming back out of the timeout called on the court. Bulldogs will lead the Braves 13-3, Alcorn State. They're trying to make the comeback, and the a and Lady Bulldogs are not having it so far. A dominant performance on both ends of the court. Three from Alcorn, no good. And Evans again with the rebound, and Tierra Dark brings the ball up the court. Well, beginning of this game, I said that it was going to come fairly easy for these Lady Bulldogs to dominate the Lady Braves, but I didn't know it was going to take this quick. I mean, the Bulldogs got them out, ma out matching down low, man. I mean, you got big Alicia Davis and Ashley Dawson, so it's, it's hard to get a rebound over them. Well, I Go ahead, Reggie. Well, I think what we're doing really well is outside of rebounding is just putting up the good, the great shots. Not the good shots, but the great shots. And that's where that team-oriented basketball really comes into effect. Most definitely, Reggie. I won't interrupt you again. You the runner of this show. That's King if I misses the free throw, Jalen. Look, we are a three-man <laughs> team. We are a team. I'm gonna come back to the next game and be like, nah, you you don't have you don't have a spot over here. What? Yeah, Richard said so. <laughs> no. And Jada Hargrove tried to drive, and we have a foul on the court called against, I wanna say Lauren McKee. You know, and the lady, called against her. The Lady Braves, they are just trying to find something to work for their favor, but the Bulldogs in their great defense early in this first quarter is just showing that it's going to be hard to score on this team. I mean, it's 13-3 already, three minutes and 59 seconds into the first quarter. I mean, the Bulldogs, the Lady Bulldogs have won this first quarter hands down. Here we go, Hall trying to drive, nearly stolen by Tierra Dark. And the hook shot. The runner is good for Tajana Isler, and it's now 13 to 5. Lady Bulldogs still lead by eight as Jones will drive. This will hand it off to Tierra Dark. Over to McKee for the three. Knocks it down, and it's money for Lauren McKee. We finally got to use it earlier today, Reggie. McKee yeah. for the three. McKee for the three. I couldn't say it early on in the Southern game, but finally. I was able to get that out the way, but I hope, hopefully I'm not done saying that for the rest of the game. Definitely. I mean, when you look at these Lady Braves, I mean, defensively, they just look puzzled trying to guard the Lady Bulldogs. I mean, that's not the first time that there was an open shooter outside the perimeter for a three. Well, right now, I think we're doing really well just all around offensively and defensively. I know Coach Richards loves it. I know we love it. And McKee oh, yeah, for the three again. And this time it's off. Nearly tipped out of bounds. So Josh and Jalen, when you look at this Lady Bulldog team, they're currently fifth in the conference. Do you, how do you feel as the SWAC season gets into the middle portion of the um, schedule? Well, you know, looking at the Lady Bulldogs, you know, there's going to be some games that you think is going to be an easy win, but they're not, and you're going to have to work hard for it. And really, you got to find your rhythm. You can win one or two games, but then you'll lose your third game. And it really just takes about finding a rhythm, finding that chemistry to know that soon as the game begins, it's going to be good. I mean, you know, every game starts with that first play that's like, okay, I see how this is going to be. And that's what the Lady Bulldogs are showing right now. And if they play like this every time, then they will be a shoe in to be, heck, number two or number three in the swag, if not number one. Certainly, man. I mean... Seeing where they're at now, man, last year they was, you know, they was at the bottom. But this year they're in the race for the tournament. So I'm pretty sure they they learned a lot and they got better physically on the defensive side and offensive side. So I think they'll be in the race for really the SWAC championship. Yeah, I can't disagree with you there. I think they're going to be pretty strong contenders and pretty a really scary team for anyone to play against. When you have a great defense to always back you up, no matter who's on the court, you're going to always have a chance to win as Ashland Dotson with another great low post finish. And it's now 18 to 10. We lead the Lady Braves with a minute 52 to go in the first quarter. And that's money for Dotson every time she gets under that rim. Here we go. Jab step, pull up, jump shot. No good. McKee. I'm sorry, Nigeria Jones had the rebound. Dodson's able to pick it up and she'll pass it back to her. Jones to Cobb and it's money in transition and it's now 20 to 10. 
I mean, heck, you could have passed it to Dodson or Cobb. I mean, it was three against one, basically, in that situation. So the Bulldogs are just playing their game right now. They are just playing great. Here we go, Alcorn down by 10. Lady Bulldogs playing great defense. They're trying to stick to that man-to-man -man style. That's Dodson defending. Stolen again by a and Knocked out of bounds. Listen, anytime you get inside that paint, there's probably three or four Lady Bulldogs that are just ready to steal that ball, strip it away from you. And, I mean, the Lady Braves cannot go inside a paint like that. You know, Red and Jalen, man, the Alcorn Braves, they're having a hard time in the post. Like, what do y'all think they need to do to the box out, or what What? What you think the game plan should be? Uh, <laughs> try. I mean, you know, you get it. Okay, let me take that back. Let me take that back. I mean, from what we've seen in this first quarter, I mean, they're trying to – Set plays, set picks, it's not working. They're trying to stagger them on defense. It's not working. I mean, the Lady Bulldogs are working their way. I mean, they're leaving people wide open. They got to play tougher defense. They got to play a man-to-man -man just like the Lady Bulldogs are. I mean, you know, they get shots. They get lucky shots. But the Lady Bulldogs, it seems like they're just being tougher than the Lady Braves right now. So, I mean, if I had to answer instead of try, I mean, you know, you just have to take it slow and just – Try to find a rhythm and not let the Lady Bulldogs get to you, but that is hard right now. If I'm Alcorn, all you can do is really out-hustle A&M. Top to bottom, A&M matches you size for size, height for height, and the biggest advantage A&M really has over Alcorn are their low-post players in Alicia Davis, Ashlyn Dotson, and Alexis Evans. Well, how you supposed to out-hustle? How you going to out-hustle Kenya Pye? And Jamika Cobb and Deshauna Harper, it's like Tasmanian Devils. I out never there. said they're going to do it. I'm just throwing out a suggestion. I know that, Mons. But what I'm stating is how they're going to do that. How can they out hustle three people that pretty much change the momentum of the game? You just named off three people. I can name off three more. You got Deshauna Harper. You got Nigeria Jones. You got Lazoria Sanders. You got Carnethia Brown. I mean, this, this is true. This is true. But those three. Cobb, Pye, and Harper, I mean, they come out of nowhere. I mean, we see Kenya Pye, she, when the ball comes out for the board, she gets boards, she gets the points, she gets the assists, and she gets steals. I mean, she can do a lot. And Deshauna Harper, you never know where she's coming from either. Pull up Jay. It's money for number 32, Jada Hargrove out of Georgia, knocking that down. But A&M still leads 21-14 in the final seconds of the first. Jones puts up the last second shot, and it's no good. Well, fellas, it might be cold outside, but the Lady Bulldogs are really hot here indoors. 21 to 14, Bulldogs lead the Lady Braves. How do you like the game so far? I mean, I like good. I mean, the Bulldogs did what they wanted to do in that first quarter, and that was control the game through offense, through defense, had good shots, and they took advantage of those shots. And you're right, Reds. I mean, they came out, they came out furious, man. They're doing a good job in the post. Their offense going early, you know. So I'm looking for them to keep keep their offense going. And you know they out hustling them in the paint for the rebound. So I'm looking for for them to have the same momentum later on. 21 to 14. And I gotta say what I like out of our Lady Bulldogs so far right now is simply put, they're playing all around great basketball. Defensively, offensively, they're making easy shots, they're making their free throws, they're playing great defense. They don't have to go to a zone, they're playing them straight up man to man and just outperforming them and physically just wearing away at Alcorn State. And so far, that physical toll has led to the seven-point lead at the end of the quarter. Oh, boy, I got to say, do you think teams at the top, so Southern, you know, you got – Southern, Alabama State, they're now moved up to third in the SWAC right now to a lesser degree, even Grambling State. As this Lady Bulldogs season continues on, should they take more fear into the Lady Bulldogs and respect them more as a team? Definitely. This is what I stated, I guess, in our Southern game. You know, 
when you come to Elmore Gymnasium, or even when you just play the Lady Bulldogs, you think it's going to be an easy win, and all of a sudden, oh, it's a steal. Oh, it's a point right there. Wait, what's going on here? You know, it's kind of like that boxing mentality. Like, you're ready to box, but once you get hit in the mouth, you don't know what you're going to do. And that's how it is with these Lady Bulldogs. They will hit you in the mouth, and then you have to rethink your whole strategy on how to attack these Lady Bulldogs. And you're definitely right, man. I mean, teams come in thinking that the Bulldogs, you know, they're not going to do nothing or they're not going to play their game. You know, the Bulldogs, they hustle. They, they're they a great defensive team. So they're going to they gonna have a lot of teams scared on the, on the offense and defensive side. Speaking of scared, I mean, Jamaica Cobb and Deshaun Harper, the true hustlers of this team. I mean... Deshauna Harper, we saw this out of her last season, and it's just grown this year. She's one of the she's one of the key players that provide the heart and soul for our Bulldogs. And then you have Jamika Cobb as well, who also provides that hustle and that never say die attitude that's necessary to win any to win against any opponent that you go up against. Um, I gotta say, so far my favorite my favorite player this year, you should already know, it's Lauren McKee. Of course, Reggie. Well. I think my favorite player would be Tierra Dark, man, because I like her game, man. She's a bully, man. She forces her way inside, and she, you know, she make tough shots. So I like, I like Tierra Dark. Definitely. I mean, my favorite player or players is the whole squad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna get trapped in this. <laughs> I'm not gonna get trapped in this. Well, no, we can't beat that right there. <laughs> yeah, you're right. But going back to Tierra Dark, she's putting up nearly eight points per game. She's coming off of the bench. She provides a really, really good scoring outlet coming off of the bench, and it's a great spark plug. You know, that's the great thing about these Lady Bulldogs. You know, once the starters go until the bench, the bench comes up, and you have Tierra Dark and Alexis Evans, who pretty much fully carries on the weight of that team, especially with Natalie Collins as well. I mean, so... Even it doesn't matter how the lineup looks, they're still a force to be reckoned with. Don't forget, Kanita Brown, she she come off the bench and do a lot too. I mean, a couple games ago, she had a big game from the three point line. So you know anybody can bite from this Bulldog team. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. Harper, she's gonna drive, gets it back out to Cobb, and Cobb nearly lost her handle, and it's stolen by the Lady Braves, running in transition. And Deasha Brown knocks down the mid-range jump shot for the Lady Braves, and it's now 26 to 16, but it's still a 10-point lead for the Lady Bulldogs. You know, looking at Harper's game compared to last year, you know, she was a little bit wild, a little bit reckless, and she would make just the little mistakes, but now it seems like she's still a little bit fast-paced, but she knows how to slow it down, and her court vision has improved too. And you're right, Jalen. I mean, she, she got better. Her, like, she know how to control her game now, like, she was a better player last year. I saw it in her. Like, she can dribble, create her own shots. But she got a control of that game now. Like, she take her time, pass the ball to, to the open person, and, you know, deliver, deliver her, help her team deliver a win. And Jamika Cobb gets the finish inside, plus the foul. A great assist from Carnethia Brown. Well, this is looking like 2001, fellas, because they get nothing but and one. You get it? You get it? And one? That's yes. three best. Okay, cool. Yes. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> First free throw attempt for Jamika Cobb. And it is off of the backboard. No good, but the Lady Bulldogs still lead 28 to 16. I mean, throughout the gates, the Bo Lady Bulldogs have had the lead the whole time. The Lady Braves have not even came close to even coming back to these Lady Bulldogs. I mean, at one point it was 2 nothing. Well, yeah, you know, I mean, that's just how the start of the game works, though. So I mean, yeah, it counts. It counts somewhat. <laughs> Harper tried to drive, but we have a travel call on the court. And Lady Braves will get the ball right back with 8.07 to go in the second quarter. And so far, it's been all A&M coming right out the gate. Coach Richards loving what she sees. She's over there kind of, you know, shimming a little bit, smiling enjoying what her Lady Bulldogs have done so far. She's impressed, but like I said, when that hit, when it comes to that final clock in that fourth quarter, then we'll see how she really is. You know, you can play good now, but you have to keep it up. You and know, you play to win the game. I'm going to say that every time we're on broadcast. You play to win the game. Exactly. You know, you play to win. You don't play for the first half or the second half. You play for the whole entirety of the game to win. Exactly, exactly. 
And Deshauna Harper played great defense just now, forcing the miss. But Alcorn will maintain possession, inbounding for Alcorn, DeAsia Brown. And coming onto the court right now for AM is Kenya Pye, who checked back in. You know, if the Lady Braves, they look a little fatigued already. And the Lady Bulldogs just look like a shark that sees blood and just coming right for it. Here we go. Charisma Walker tried to drive, but she couldn't. And we have a foul on the court called against AM once again. Foul starts for Bulldogs, number 24, Tierra Dark. Dark's first personal foul, team set. And Alcorn will inbound, so nobody was checked out of the game. Same players coming in before the foul. Three ball up, and it's off the mark, but rebounded. Harper playing great defense to keep them from trying to get an open shot. The three is up, however, it's good for Brown. And then the crazy thing about it is, you know, the Lady Braves, they'll shoot a three, but then the Bulldogs will come back with like six or seven un unanswered points. So it's like, okay, I'll see, I'll, I'll match what you have, but I'll put more into it. I think that's what I was trying to say. <laughs> I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Brown answers right back. Beautiful yeah, jump see, shot. There's a three-point. Yeah, you see what I'm saying. Yeah. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. So 31 to 19. Lady Bulldogs lead the Lady Braves early on in this matchup. And we have a foul called on the court. And going to the free throw line is Diamond Hall. But I see exactly what you're saying. The Lady Braves are playing a lot of catch-up basketball right now because ever since the first quarter when they were down 13 to 3, They've really been trying to climb uphill, and the Lady Bulldogs are just making that hill steeper and steeper and steeper. I mean, the Lady Bulldogs, they're look, they looking like a better team, man. I can see the Bulldogs winning already. Most definitely, most definitely. I mean, you know, you have to you have to not let up. Put your foot on that neck and just keep on to create that pressure and just put in the sink. To be honest, some of the most dangerous teams that you see in all the sports are the ones that you don't expect to win. And then when they have a great season, you don't, you're not really sure how to game plan for it once you actually face them head to head. Oh yeah, most definitely, most definitely. But I mean, when you look at this Lady Bulldog team, you know, they know what to do. They know how to play the game. And once they have a lead, they won't let up. They will keep scoring. They will not give you any kind of condensation that, okay, we're going to come back. No, it's straight. We're dominating you, and it's going to continue until this game is over with. And Kenya Pye with the beautiful move inside made two Lady Brave defenders jump up in the air. She took advantage, timed her shot, and was able to get the foul as well as they came down on her. But she will miss the end one attempt, but the Lady Bulldogs still lead 33-21 to with 6-21 to go in the second quarter. Trying to move the ball around and trying to run the offense. Pull up three is money for Hall. So 33 to 24, Lady Bulldogs still lead by nine as Jones bring the ball up the court. And I see that's how the Lady Braves are trying to get back in this game by using that three-pointer. But I wouldn't stick to it that entire time because Lady Bulldogs are one of the top three teams in the conference in terms of three-point defensive percentage, giving up just around 26% per game from the three-point line. So really great perimeter defense from everybody all across the board. As Jones is called on for a defensive foul. That was number five, Nigeria Jones. Her first yeah, first she had her hands up and everything, four. but once it comes into contact, that's a foul. I thought her feet were set, but I guess not. That just proves more to your theory, huh, Reggie? <laughs> Look, <laughs> I'm not saying anything. We're just going to ride it out. Let's just ride it out. Okay, Jesse Ventura. Uh, but, you know, the Lady Bulldogs are playing just phenomenal basketball right now, especially at their house, at the Elmore Gymnasium. And Elmore Gymnasium has so far become a really, really tough place to play for the past few years with the rebuild of the women's program and the men's program led by Coach Dylan Howard. They've really become a very, very strong force to be reckoned with at home. Cobb with the beautiful crossover. Evans puts it up in money for Alexis Evans. It's now 35-26. Lady Bulldogs bring that lead back up to nine. And that's how you dominate in a coach. You know, it just takes one step or two, and Evans has her feet straight. You know, speaking of Jamaica Cobb, 
she actually developed as a, a great player. Like, I seen her in the gym time after time, practice on her jump or practice on her defense. So she really, it shows that she developed as a player. Definitely. I mean, that's what the true players do. That's what the great players do. Once the game is over with, it's not time to leave. Practice on your shots. Think about what you did wrong in the previous game to get better for the next game. You know, I read, I read an article saying that Giannis Antetokounmpo, when this team loses, he replays the entire fourth quarter and matches exactly what he did wrong to try and perfect that for the next game. So you have to go to that sort of level to try and better yourself as a player for the games to come. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, that's what Lisa Leslie did, too, and that's what helped the Sparks get those championships in the late 90s, early 2000s. Right. I mean, it's really up to the player, man. I mean, you got to have dedication and heart, man. You want to, you have to want to win and have that drive to win. Exactly. And help your team, carry your team to a championship. Exactly. You know, if you practice at something every day, you're going to get better. But once you get, you're never great at it. You always have to continue to practice. You know, Nigeria Jones reminds me a lot of Maya Moore to a degree. Great finisher, all around great athlete, can do just about anything you want on the court. Really? Yes, really. Oh my, you do use an NBA reference? Yes. That is incredible. But yeah, she does remind me a lot of Maya Moore. <laughs> yes, a lot of Maya Moore. From Minnesota. Minnesota Lynx. I mean, she's a hustler though. She is a true hustler. And you know, she knows the fundamentals of basketball. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy as that sound, a lot of players do not know the fundamentals. It's all about just shoot or they just stuck at one thing but not the full fundamentals. I mean, just look at the Lady Bulldogs playing defense right now. That's fundamentals. Somebody gets the ball, you get at them. As Alexis Evans playing tough defense in the low post. Shauna Harper came in. She closed out really well at the three-point line, and Alexis Evans just took advantage when she tried to drive. Beautiful block at the backboard. And so the Lady Bulldogs lead the Lady Braves 36 to 28. 454 to go in the second quarter. Yeah. Dr. Bernice A. King, she will be here at Alabama A&M University on February the 12th to honor Black History Month. Every HBCU honoring Black History Month and A&M is showing just how they do it. If we do it big, we do it big then. And that's a great woman. Her father was a great man, one of the most influential men, not only of the 20th century, but just of all time world round. Black History Month is in a few weeks. Just about one more week to go in January. The next week is the start of February. You know, there's always debate, like, really should there be a Black History Month? But, you know, you'd be surprised just how much African Americans have done for this country and how a lot of people do not even know about it. Exactly. I mean, from open heart surgery to the Sim traffic lights. I mean, we've done a lot of stuff. Simple stuff as the toilet. I mean. That too. And the finishing transition for Jada Hargrove. So, Josh, when you think about black history, especially among HBCUs like Alabama A&M, do, do, do you think Black History Month just means that much more while you're going to college out of historically black college or university? I mean, you know, as an individual or a human being, so I think Black History Month means a lot to all our culture and you outside our coach because you know everybody had that in content with black people because we do a lot you know as a as people we do a lot we have did a lot for our freedom so i think we and we still developing i mean look, look at the last president barack obama so we developing more you know we learning more so 38 to 30 lady bulldogs lead the lady braves Black History Month coming up really, really soon. We're going to have multiple events on campus honoring all those who have come before us to pave the way for all of the young black people here right now to continue the great legacy of black culture. 
as the three-pointer is made by Alcorn, and it's now 38-33, so the Lady Braves have inched just a little bit closer to try and make this game more respectable. Just a little bit closer, but the Lady Bulldogs always answer back, but they need to clamp down on that defense, especially when they are outside that key, because the Lady Braves, I mean, half of their points came from threes. Jones puts up the shot. It's no good. Evans gets the rebound, and she will get fouled going to the free throw line for two. Alexis Evans, she shoots 83% from the free throw line. One of the better consistent free throw shooters on our team. I must definitely. She gets in the post and says, either you're going to foul me or I'm going to get the shot up. Either way, I'm still going to be on the free throw line. A great, raw, young center. And she has a great teammate in Ashland Dotson and Alicia Davis. And the first free throw is no good because of basket interference. So it's still 38 to 33. Coach Richards getting ready to sub in Ashland Dotson. Second free throw attempt is no good. And Jamika Cobb hustling for the rebound, but she just can't quite get it. Running in transition to Lady Braves. Uh, Cobb had it. it was on her fingertips but couldn't come down with the ball. Jump shot. No good. And Evans with another rebound to her stat total. Cobb in transition. Back over to Evans. Evans mid-range. Jump shot. No good. Harper was in position for the rebound, but I thought she was shoved away from the ball for a second. I thought so, too. You know, I think if she didn't hesitate, she would have had it. And we have another foul called on the court. And that will send Alcorn to the free throw line. Jamesha Bernard at the free throw line for the Lady Braves right now. First free throw attempt for Bernard is no good. Goes in and out. So Ashlyn Dotson comes in for Alexis Evans. And Tierra Dark will sub in for Kenya Pye for the Lady Bulldogs. As we see the Bulldogs, I mean, that first quarter, 21 points. Right now, they have 17 in this second quarter. So, I mean, they are producing really well in that offense, don't you think, Reggie? Yeah, I think so. I think with a the one thing that hurt them could be lack of consistency. There are times where the Lady Balls look like they have the best Not offense you. in the swag, and there are times where they look like they have somewhat of an average offense in the SWAC because they play such great defense, physically you're going to tie yourself out. And you have to really find that great balance. And when a &M finds that balance, they are, to me, the best all-around team in the conference. And they so far have found that balance here this evening. As have a bit of a tie-up in the low post between Ashlyn Dotson and Jamesha Bernard. So with 2.29 to go in the second quarter, Bulldogs lead the Braves 42-34, and Alicia Davis is getting ready to check into the game, and she will come in for Ashley Dotson. So this is her first time seeing action here this evening. Alicia Davis coming into this game. You know, that's what I noticed. I mean, Coach Richard, she sometimes put some of her players, like a Collins, in the second half instead of just the first half. I'm wondering why is that? It'll be interesting. I think she's gonna. I think she's going to ease. I think she's going to really gradually ease Natalie back into the rotation and give it some more time throughout the season. Yeah, it could be. She still could be recovering from an injury, so she had to, you know, play play in the game at small times to find her game back. Definitely, definitely. And Hargrove knocks down the corner three, but Lady Bulldog still lead. 42 to 37 with under two minutes to go in the game. And it's incredible. I mean, these Lady Braves, they've been shooting a lot of threes to get them back Nigeria in the game. But Jones. as we just saw from Nigeria Jones, the Bulldogs always answer back with not just one shot, but two shots or even three or four sometimes. And driving was Hall, and she misses. Great Ooh, save. Nice save by Cobb. And that's hustling one-on-one -on -one for you. 
Harper pull up Jay in transition. And it's money for the Lady Bulldogs. And Deshauna Harper with the rebound plus the transition. 46-37. Bulldogs see, lead. See, that's the only time the sequence looked good like that. When you save the ball, you bring it back, and then you make the shot. I mean, Deshauna Harper showing off just how much of an all-around player she is. You know, it's kind of like when you have those ball handling skills and you can just shake somebody off their shoes. But if you don't make the basket, eh. Million dollar move with a 10 cent finish. I was thinking that. Thank you. You're welcome. And we have an illegal screen called against Alicia Davis. Are you serious right now? But that will send Alcorn to the free throw line. Bulldogs still lead 46 to 40 with just over a minute to go in the first half. I apologize for that. They're going to inbound. Both teams are in the bonus, so that's why I said that. Josh, what do you think the Lady Bulldogs are going to have to do in the second half to keep up this lead? I mean, they they need to come out like they did in the first half. I mean, they offensive game kind of slowed down, but their defensive game is still there. So I'm going to see them. I can see them next half fully injured, fully restored, and they're going to come out strong. Oh, definitely, definitely. And Nigeria Jones with the beautiful mid-range pull-up. But Alcorn will respond, so it's 48 to 42. Over 20 seconds to go in the second quarter. And Coach Richards will call a timeout on the floor. Great call timeout. That way you can just slow down the game. And when it hits those last seconds, you can just shoot for something. Keep in mind, this is game one of our two-game doubleheader. The Alabama a and men's basketball team and Alcorn State Braves men's basketball teams will scur off after this game. 48-42, Lady Bulldogs lead. The Lady Braves will be back with you in just a second. Yo. of the timeout. Lady Bulldogs with the basketball. Over 20 seconds left in the first half as Jones has the ball in her hands. And you know, the Bulldogs, they do not need to rush anything. They just need to take it slow, wait to that final second to try to find a shot. Jones is going to drive, tries to find the open man. She'll put it up herself. No good. Rebounded by Kenya Pye. Has to put it up. And she misses at the last second. Lady Bulldogs still lead 48 to 42. But they're going to call, they're going to draw a foul against Alcorn at the very last second. So the refs are saying she got the foul off just in time before the shot clock went off. And Kenya Pye will go to the free throw line. I'm surprised she managed to draw contact in just that short amount of time, but she was able to. I know that is rare to have a call when it's 0-0 zero, zero on the clock. I mean, that that's, can tell you the the difference from the refs this game and the refs last game. <laughs> they're doing their job, man. Well, the refs, they're still reviewing, so they could reverse everything in a second. But the initial call was a foul against Alcorn. Well, while we figure that that's going on, I mean, just let's just talk about this first half from these Lady Bulldogs. I mean, putting up 48 points in this first half, impressive. I mean, you, Nigeria Jones having a great game. You have Ashley Dawson, they're having a great game. So they're looking very good. And their offensive game looking splendid this game. Man. I mean, dangerous. They're looking dangerous, man. This is the Lady Bulldogs at their best. Consistent offense, still playing physical defense, that is Lady Bulldog basketball at its absolute best. And this team can honestly take down anyone in the swag with this style of play that they're having right now. I mean, certainly, man. I mean, I love this year Bulldog team, man. They're so physical and they hustle. And you can tell what kind of condition they in, how they play their game. That's Kenya Pies at the free throw line right now. First free throw attempt is no good. So they put four tenths of a second left onto the clock. 
So it was confirmed she did draw contact but right before the, clock, the game clock went off. Second free throw attempt, however, is good. So 49 to 42, Bulldogs lead the Braves. Makes up for the first miss. And that will do it for the first half. Lady Bulldogs lead the Braves 49 to 42. What do you like from that first half real quick? Oh, hustle, hustle. I mean, that's what we said right out the gates with this game. They hustle. They play tremendous offense. And, I mean, the defense, especially in the first quarter, was dominant. I mean, I like the offensive game for the Bulldogs. It looked way better from last game. I mean, Nigeria Jones having a great game, taking over her team, helping her team take over that first half. I really like the explosiveness from Nigeria Jones and Deshauna Harper all around having another great sensational game from those two. So in the so we have 15 minutes to go until the third quarter. Yeah. Gentlemen, welcome back to TM Elmore Gymnasium here on the campus of Alabama A&M University. The A&M Lady Bulldogs lead the Alcorn State Lady Braves 49 to 42. What do you like from that first half so far, Jalen and Josh? I mean, pretty much that first half was just dominating. Having that killer instinct somewhat to just not let your foot off the pedal, to keep trying. I mean, even when the Lady Braves was shooting threes and trying their best to come back, the Bulldogs did not give up. They did not freak out. They did not stammer around. They played their basketball, and that's what helps us as fellow Bulldog Nation members to show that once you have that commitment and that drive that you can do anything. And that's the key word Justin just said, man, that killer instinct, man, that killer instinct. These Bulldogs, they they hustle, they play defense, they play to the end, man. And these Bulldogs looking good on the offensive side tonight, man. Yeah, I see what you're saying as well, and I also like the fact that despite the slight comeback the Lady Braves have put up, the Lady Bulldogs are still just chopping away at that wood and letting the Lady Braves know, hey, you're not going to get the lead back no matter what. We're going to shut you down. This second half, we're going to take you out and end this game when it matters most. But, you know, we, you know, it's open opportunities, but also inside the paint. I mean, Dotson has scored. Evans has scored. Pye has scored. I mean, you know, when these ladies get in the post, they are phenomenal. And Jamika Cobb gets the rebound plus the foul called. And she will inbound for the Lady Bulldogs. And here comes Ashana Harper bringing the ball up the court. And, you know, it's so funny, you know, the Lady Braves, they try to cut the lead. They try to cut it by trailing by six points, eight points. But all of a sudden, the Bulldogs bring it back to 10 points, 12 points. So, I mean, the Lady Bulldogs just have to stay hungry and keep striving like they did in that first half. And that's right, Jalen. I mean, they keep taking their smart shots, man. They're taking a lot of smart shots tonight. So if they can keep knocking these shots down, they're going to make, make this league even larger. Oh, most definitely, most definitely. But, you know, it's all about just finding those open shots, those great opportunities. Consistency. Consistency is key. Consistency is key. Harper with the basketball now. Coach Rich is trying to run the offense from the sidelines here. Down low to Cobb. Back out to Harper. And Pye's going to put up a floater. It's blocked. And Alcorn will get the rebound. And that's been somewhat of a struggle for the Lady Braves as they haven't had the same desire as AM has had rebounding the basketball so far in this game. As Dashlyn Dotson, Jamika Cobb, Deshauna Harper, Alexis Evans, and even Alicia Davis coming off of the bench with the minimal playing time that she's had. They've all just simply out-hustled Alcorn, and we had this conversation at the beginning of the game. I said that's the only way that they can really do it. You, Jalen, don't believe they really can. And I know Josh, he doesn't give a chance to anybody. Uh, see, see, that's where you're wrong, Reggie. See, don't put words in my mouth. <laughs> I said they can try, but what we saw in that first half from these Lady Bulldogs, I mean, they was dominating in the paint. Second chance points. Every time they went up in the lane, it was an and one. So, you know, when you're doing, when the other team is doing so much, I mean, what else can you do but continue to try? 
I mean, you got the two twin towers down there, Ashton and Dawson and uh, Alexis Evans. I mean, it's it's hard to box them out. I mean, they're doing a great job down low. They getting a lot of sec second chance shots, and, and that tells you why they got to leave tonight. And beautiful offensive awareness by Kenya Pye with the beautiful bounce pass to Alexis Evans. And you know, to add on what you said, Josh, I mean, especially with Evans, I mean, she is like a rock. You cannot move her when she gets in that post. And then when she gets the rebound, you know, it's rare when you see a player who comes up for the rebound and everybody else just stays back. And you're right, Jalen. I mean, she coming off the bench after the first half, coming off the bench with six rebounds, man. I mean, she's, she's all boxing them, you know, posting them up. She's doing it all, man. Definitely, definitely. And an easy. And it was almost put in by Janika Cobb. Alexis Evans had the rebound but couldn't quite get it in. So some great low post defense from the Lady Braves. Yes, I thought it was going to be an easy shot for the Cobb. But she was defending pretty good. To be fair, I'll say this. To be fair for a and Alexis Evans she out hustled everyone on the Lady Braves side of the basketball. It took, a, it took her to foul just for Lady Braves to get the ball back in their possession when she lost her hand on the basketball trying to get the put back shot to go for a second time around. So I think AM is just really tiring out Alcorn from start to finish from the way it looks. You know, that's the main point. You know, they can come back all they want, but, you know, as long as you still have that lead, then. You know, you still play a great game. I mean, yeah, man. I, I really think the Bulldogs are, you know, getting them tired because you can tell how conditioned this Bulldog team is, man. I mean, they running all over the place. They hustling. They fighting for rebounds. And, you know, they fighting to the end of the quarter and the end of the game. I mean, that's just how we are. We just don't get tired. We, we, keep, we keep going in. And at the free throw line is Tierra Dark. Having a very, very interesting stance from the free throw line. Likes to go off a little bit to the left of the free throw line, but she will knock it down. Nothing but net. 55-48, Bulldogs lead the Braves. This year, Tierra Dark shooting from the free throw line right now. A very okay 55%. It's a make or miss situation, but in the clutch, she is one of the more consistent free throw shooters for her team. And she'll knock down both of her free throws, so nothing is in doubt. She leaves nothing in doubt. 56 48. Definitely. You know, I'm going to make an NBA reference just this once. You know, <laughs> with free throws, like Shaq, he still led in, he's still top 10 in most free throws made, and he could not shoot free throws. Well, I mean, it goes to getting fouled, fouled a lot. Oh, yeah, definitely. But still, when you make that many free throws, I mean, it's still good. I mean, even if it's 50, like you said, there's a chance it may go in, there's a chance it may not go in. But if it goes in those key moments, then that's all that matters. And Nigeria Jones had the steal. Great all-around defense, almost stolen again by Tierra Dark this time. Jump shot no good, and Evans with the beautiful rebound, just bodying people out of the way. And that was just a lack of focus on the Lady Braves and a great move by Nigeria. And Tierra Dark gets the rebound, put it back, no good. And Evans. that's it. Mm. I mean, Alexis. Evans is just bullying Isler down there, man. She's doing a great job boxing her out, and it looks like she's having a hard time guarding. Man, she's like that kid bully you had that he took something from you and is like, no, it's mine, it's mine. You're jumping up and down for it, but you're never going to get it. That's what Alexa Evans is doing related to what Josh said about her just bullying down that post. We have a foul on the court. Pye tried to dribble inside and then restock play. And this Lady Bulldog team looking like the number one Bulldogs all over again. We also have a timeout called on the court as well. Lady Braves down by 10 to our Lady Bulldogs right now. And we'll be back with you in just a moment. 58 to 48. Yeah.
welcome back to TM Elmore Gymnasium. If you're just tuning in, Lady Bulldogs lead the Lady Braves 58 to 48. First game of this two-game doubleheader between AM and Alcorn State. And it's rebounded by Alcorn. It's a missed shot by Nigeria Jones. They'll have a foul called against her as well. And it's coming out of that timeout, a key highlight is Alexis Evans. Eight points, ten rebounds here tonight. She's been great on offense, very consistent, but she's been just as good on the glass, getting offensive rebounds and defensive rebounds. She has three offensive rebounds, seven defensive rebounds, playing an all-around great game at the center position. And not, not just grabbing the rebounds, you know, a defensive game, blocking shots, and looking like Antetokounmpo down there. Exactly, with the, with Antetokounmpo, Brittany Griner, just great players like that who can control the boards and the points. So if Alexis Evans is... Brittany Griner, which you consider Ashlyn Dotson to a degree. Brianna Stewart, good face-up game, really great in the low post. Likes to get off her offensive game when necessary. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. You know, they complement each other, especially when one is, in the, one is on the bench and one is on the court. Yeah, the jump shot is no good as Cobb gets the rebound, and she'll bring it up the court for the Lady Bulldogs. On the court right now for AM, and m Kenya Pye, Sierra Dark, Nigeria Jones, Alexis Evans, and Jamika Cobb. Over, dark, jump shot, no good, and almost got a rebound. Alexis Evans, one Great in. save. Goodness. And there go her double double for Alicia Davis. I mean, Alexis, excuse me, Alexis Evans. <laughs> <laughs> 10 and 11. If that was a week of the play, that is one of them right there. That is an honorable mention. And it's another rebound for Evans. So she now has 11 points. I'm sorry, she has now 10 points, 12 rebounds. 60 to 48. Bulldogs with the Braves. I mean, she's looking like a glass cleaner down there, man. She's cleaning up the paint. Carnethia Brown got her own rebound, and that's the hustle right now. Look at these Alcorn State players right now. They all just look gassed right now. And a and &M's playing with energy top to bottom. We know, and they, get, they, are, they are getting that energy from Alexis Evans, who is controlling this third quarter. And it's looking a repeat of the first quarter. I mean, Lady Braves have to find a way to stop her, but they can't. How, how can you? When I look at players, when I look at their stat lines, when you think about Alexis Evans, if you even if you take away just the points that she has in this game, AM will still lead this game by two. So that just goes to show you that AM top to bottom, they have played an all-around game despite Evans having her star of performance. Everyone else contributing in big ways as well. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. And inbounding is Alcorn right now. And bringing the ball up the court for Alcorn is Hargrove. So the same five for AM on the court, except Tierra Dark was subbed out, and Carnethia Brown will come in for her. Evans had the block, but she jumped a little bit too early. And a foul called against the Lady Bulldogs. And with Evans, she doesn't get faked out too much, so you got to take advantage when you have it. And AM right now leads 60 to 48. AM coming into this game fifth in the conference at three and three in the SWAC, eight and nine overall. Alcorn State, they're sitting at ninth. They're trying to get a win here this evening to move up into eighth. Other matchups around the conference include Southern against ASU, Prairie View taking on Arkansas Pine Bluff, and Texas Southern on the road taking on Mississippi Valley State. And this game is looking just like a repeat of what happened last year here at the Elmore Gymnasium, 74-63. I mean, Dawson, 18 points. Jones, 4 assists, 15 points. Collins, 14 points and 8 rebounds. And they dominated from start to finish in that game. And it, it, just, it just shows you that they got more help from last year to this year. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, if anything, you know, the biggest person you had was Dawson, but now she has help with Evans to pretty much take some relief off of her. As Carnethia Brown gets another bucket inside for the Lady Bulldogs, and it's now 62 to 49, 13-point lead for AM. You know, we talked about Alexis, Alexis Evans, but we have not talked that much about Carnethia Brown. I know you brought her out earlier, 
But, you know, we really need to focus on just how great she is playing. Well, I'm sorry, Carnethia. You're wonderful. But Alexis Evans right now, goodness. What a block by Alexis Evans. Oh, my goodness. And she had a massive game. You know, she's guarding that paint like she posted. Fellas, this A&M Lady Bulldog team, I think they're ready to get an, another run started when it comes to W's this season. Beautiful crossover from Brown. Bad pass, but A&M trying to get the possession back. Have a jump ball called on the court, and they'll give the possession to, a to Alcorn State. But boy, this team is playing like they want to win every single game from here on out. Not only that, Reggie, I think they just want to prove that they can bounce back from a loss. And Evans gets the standing ovation from the home crowd, from her players, from her coach. She has played phenomenal. And coming in for is Alicia Davis, who, by the way, well, she's only 6'1". I mean, if you go from 6'2 to 6'3", oh, what's next? Oh, I got a 6'1 center as well. Why not throw her in there? She has a rebound in her hands, and she gets the possession for A&M, called out against Alcorn. Hey, that's all to me. I'm only 5'4". I mean, oh, my goodness. Man, A&M did a great job this season with their recruiting staff, man. I mean, they got the three big, big players coming off the bench, man. It's, it's crazy. And this team, what's crazy is no one on this team except for Kenya Pai. Kenya Pai is the lone senior, and she's a transfer. Everyone else has been here for the past three years. At least eight players on this team have been here for the past three years. So they're all going to stay together going into next season. That's just as dangerous. That's right. We just see that the Lady Braves cannot match up to the Lady Bulldogs' speed. But, you know, when we talk about these, the centers A&M have with their recruiting, I mean, these girls can just do about anything, especially on that defensive end. I mean, they can lock down. They can get the boards. They can have an opponent scared to even try to get the ball. So, Josh, if you're Coach Richards, do you continue this recruit this recruiting trend of getting this recruiting trend of getting, you know, forwards and centers at six two, six three, six one, or do you try to go for more perimeter oriented players at the guard and wing? I mean, certainly, man. I mean, you got a lot of just like you said. You know, they got a lot of players coming back in this season. You know, you got a lot of skilled players. So. I'm looking forward to her keep recruiting fours and you know centers. So it's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna look good, man. The no look. Oh, we got a charge called on the court. This is the final charge against the Bulldogs, number 24, Tierra Dark. And Tierra Dark had the beautiful crossover, and like you said, the no look pass to um, Carnethia Brown, but they're gonna call a charge against Tierra Dark. I I don't know about that, fellas. Alicia Davis defending in the paint. And it look like Block City out here, man. I mean, they're denying everything. Hey, now, we having a block party. You know, you want to come and get a block, get a burger, catch up on it. You know, we got it for you. I mean, that's what these lady Bulldogs are doing right now. We're just hosting a block party right now, fellas. A steal with a side of fries. You know, exactly, the exactly. The there we go. And at the free throw line right now, Jamesha Bernard. First free throw attempt is no good off the back iron. And there you see that physicality coming in to effect right now. Throughout these past couple of games, AM has used their physical dominance to control the tempo most of the time. And a lot of players, they kind of get shaken up when they, get to, when they go to the free throw line in these high pressure situations. And the clock is winding down. Jones with the basketball. Let's see what we can do here at the end. Of the third quarter, 62 to 50. Lady Bulldogs lead the Lady Braves. She's going to waste the clock. Shot clock is off. Crossover. Jones will drive back out to Dark. Over. Brown. The three. No good. Rebounded by Jamika Cobb. Foul on the court. And that's that hustle I was talking about from Jamika Cobb, man. I, with her height, she fights for the rebound. And it's, it's just crazy, man. That and her vertical. Her vertical is outstanding. Her and Deshaunna Harper. You know, they're small compared to their other teammates, but once they jump, goodness. If you notice on that last possession just now, 
Nobody on Alcorn jumped. Nobody. Jamika Cobb was the only one that jumped in that collective group down low. I mean, I'd be, I wouldn't want to jump either. All of the rebounds and them getting, I mean, they they just bullying them inside. Second free throw attempt for Cobb is no good as well. And they almost get the steal, but that will do it for the third quarter of this SWAC contest. 62-50, to 50, Lady Bulldogs lead the Lady Braves. And now it's time to simply close it out and bring it on home. And let's end this game on the right note. Yeah. Back the start of the fourth quarter, soon to be underway. Lady Bulldogs lead the Lady Braves 62 to 50. And it's been all Alexis Evans recording a double double earlier in the third quarter. And the Lady Bulldogs have a commanding 12 point lead right now to kick off the fourth and final quarter of play. As Jones will dish it off to Alicia Davis, and it's knocked out of bounds. And Alcorn will get the possession. So Jalen, Josh, when we talk about the Lady Bulldogs this season so far, this game can be an early testament to what they can do to everyone else in the conference. So what team right now do you think could possibly match A&M toe-for-toe? I think I would say our rivals, our rivals, Alabama State, maybe. Mm. You know, they had a a fluke win over us. But I think the next time if we play them, I mean, I believe the outcome would be different. But I think those are the ones to go toe-to-toe -to -toe against. You know who I think, man? Who? That one team, man. That one team, that's nobody. Nobody can defend <laughs> these Bulldogs, man. You know? I mean, we lost. It's just the regular season, so you still got the tournament. Everything changed, and, and real players show real players in the um, postseason. That's definitely true. That is definitely true. Well, right now in the SWAC standing, Southern is one in the SWAC right now. They're sitting pretty at first in the conference, Grambling second, Prairie View third, ASU fourth, a and fifth. That's your top five teams in the SWAC right now. And I mean, I think AM would want a lot of revenge for what happened to them in Birmingham as Alicia Davis will show off an easy shot in the low post as well. Her height playing a huge, huge part on that last possession just now. And you know, from start to finish, these Lady Bulldogs have been playing tremendously well. Even when it looked like the Lady Braves was going to try to make a run somewhere with the threes, but they kept their composure. I mean, they just played great basketball today. And I mean, great, great on the in the post. They got 37 rebounds as a team. You got Jamaica Cobb with seven rebounds, Tiara Dart with seven rebounds. You got Alexis Evans with 12 rebounds. I mean, as a team, they average just around 41 rebounds per game, and it's another easy bucket for a and m tiara dark in transition it's now 66 to 53 they put up 41 points as a team I and mean 41 rebounds as a team per game and already have 37 going on 40 here to kick off the fourth quarter they are easily easily outplaying what the numbers show right now oh, definitely and you know you have a team beat when they just look frustrated and it's another easy bucket for a and m in transition so 68 to 53 now Right now, the mm. place is on fire, and the Lady Braves are just trying to get out. Simply put, a and it's time to go for the kill, and that's exactly what they're doing to close this game out. I mean, this is the biggest lead by 15 points. In the first quarter, it was 10. In the third quarter, it was 12. And now, in the fourth quarter, the biggest lead of this game, 15. Do, do, do y'all guys think that these Bulldogs can fight their way back to the number one spot? Definitely. If you play like this, you know, there's just some days that you know you got it. And the, Bull, and the Lady Bulldogs, 
each game, no matter what the score says, you know, they know they got it. It's all about just execution. And today shows a great example of what they can do. And at the free throw line is Alcorn, and like you said, execution, consistency is key. They've done everything from top to bottom. They're just all around having a better game in every single facet of the game. Turnovers, rebounding, offense, defense. There's nothing more you can really say about their performance here tonight. We played a great game here this evening, fellas. Definitely. I mean, if this was 2K and one of these players was my career, I have A-plus right now. <laughs> I mean, I probably have, like, an A-minus. I might just spam the three-point button all day long and just... <laughs> this comes from the PS4, guys. Hmm. We're not going to get into that. <laughs> and we're not going to get into that. Either way, A+. Plus. Oh, Despite that, what these two say. Well, that deserves an A+, plus right there for Deshauna Harper. 70-55, to 55, Lady Bulldogs lead. 15-point lead now for A&M. Alexis Evans checks back into the game. He gets called on for the foul. And just what a great game Evans has performed tonight. I mean, when you have three, you have two players like you have Ashlyn Dotson, who's a junior right now. Alexis Evans is just a red shirt freshman, and Alicia Davis, she's a junior. Oh, she's so. a fret. Evans is a freshman? Alexis Evans is a red shirt freshman. Ah, uh, man. Let me, tell you something. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I would be scared to play her next year, especially when her game gets better, as if it's not getting better right now. Oh, uh, yeah. Possibly the next five years. I mean, a red shirt freshman. She's 6'3. She already has a polished defensive low post deep. Well, his polished low post in the defense, but offensively. You already have a good free throw shot right now. And you're just adding on to that offensively. And you know, with a great coach like Coach Richards, I think, I'm going to say this right now, I give it next season, maybe not this at the end of this season, but next season, Alexis Evans, be on the lookout for her to be the Swap Women's Player of the Year, you know, as a, as a potential Dark Horse candidate for that award. Oh, definitely, definitely. I mean, today, she... Just, well, not even today, just in any game, she can produce. She can make it scary on the boards. Pye misses the three, and it'll go out of bounds. So Alcorn will gain possession, and, you know, I mean, all around, she is a scary person to deal with. But when you have her and we have Ashlyn Dotson for the at least the next two seasons, I mean, we'll, going in the next season, and then you also have Alicia Davis to back it up, Coach Richard, she's going to have a, rec a recruiting class watching this game and recruits seeing what her team has done and how they've grown as a family for the past couple of years. They're going to want to come play here at AM. Definitely. I mean, she got some attraction. I mean, especially from great players like Harper and Evans and Kernithia Brown, just a hustler to that. I mean, not only just great players, just how, how she treat her players. You know, she treat treat them with care and, you know, show them how to be love and, you know, bond with one another. Whenever you rebuild, you learn to grow, you learn to, you learn to bond as a team. It's about family. You learn, you know, everyone's, you know, weaknesses and strengths. You learn what makes everyone tick. And as a whole, you become closer as a unit, and that leads to winning basketball. And it becomes bigger than a game. It becomes something that you are willing to do for the other person day in and day out, regardless if it's practice or in the classroom or on the court in an actual game. Well, not just that, but, you know, practice. Practice, you know, there's going to be time where practice seems tough and just breathtaking, but you have to still practice and you still have to do something. Relax now. Even though you're down by 13, you don't have to do that. I'm just saying, don't get mad. Look at the scoreboard. I don't mean to do that. I apologize. But Jamika Cobb is down, and that was a pretty tough hit she took. Yeah, here hit the floor, man. I'm hoping she's okay. Yeah.
ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Jamika Cobb was able to get up under her own power. She was hooked off the court by her coach. And that was a pretty tough fall she took. I don't want to say that was out of frustration, but to me, the way it looked was a little bit out of frustration. As Cobb puts up a three, and it's no good, but we're just glad that she's okay. But you can't, you honestly can't call for stuff like that to happen in basketball or any sport, however. Definitely, man. And you see how hot she was and then how hard she landed. But she's, she looks good off the bench. She looks good on the bench, so hopefully it's nothing serious. Yeah, and that was a hard landing for her, man. I mean, she's a tough player, so I'm hoping she's okay. Oh, definitely, definitely. Harper's with the basketball now. Final five minutes of the game. Ryan just trying to close it out and stay home here before they go on the road with a victory. You know, you just want to still be able to play good and finish strong. You know, these lady, these lady, ain't, these lady Bulldogs, they have a break tomorrow. No school. Yeah. That's a pretty good way to, you know, to start up a break away from school with a pretty big win. Definitely. We have a timeout on the court. Lady Bulldogs lead the Lady Braves 70-63 to after that three made by Alcorn State. Welcome back to T.M. Elmore Gymnasium. 70 to 63. Lady Bulldogs lead the Lady Braves right now. And Natalie Collins has checked in for Jamika Cobb. She's going to see some action here tonight. Still recovering from that wrist injury. She still has wrist tape on her shooting hand. And while there's still a break in the game, I mean, the player of the game most definitely has to be Alexis Evans. I mean, 13 rebounds, 10 points. I mean, she recorded a double-double easily today. I mean, Tierra Dark, she has nine rebounds, nine points. She can mess around and get a double-double as well. And also, I mean, Deshauna Harper producing 13 points. Nigeria Jones alongside with her, 13 as well. I mean, these girls have been playing great. And Aslan Dodson, eight points. They have produced tremendously in this game. I mean, all around, a has had a great game this evening. Like we said before, just a great all-around basketball game from top to bottom. Now it's time to close it out and walk away with the W. And, let's, and we're pretty sure a will be able to do just that in the final four and a half minutes as Jones has the basketball screen set from Collins. Oh, definitely, definitely. You know, you just got to waste as much time as you can. But still make smart shots and still, still put up smart shots, however. Oh, definitely, definitely. Trading clock as Pi goes down low. Evans with another rebound and another put back. There's just no answer for Alexis Evans right now. And you're right, man. I mean, she's just doing her thing tonight, man. I mean, they cannot stop her. Evans is just basically, listen, I'm getting tired. Listen, can this game hurry up and end? Because she is just playing. The, she's dominating this game. So on the court right now for the Lady Bulldogs, we have Tierra Dark, Kenya Pye, Nigeria Jones, Natalie Collins, and Alexis Evans. We have a quick timeout on the court right now, 72 to 63 with four minutes to go in the SWAC contest here at Elmore Gym. So Josh, Jalen, let's see if our Lady Bulldogs can close it out with a dub with this nine-point lead. Yo. to go in this game so let's see 
Well, Coach Richardson's dialed up here on defense. Alcorn won at that three, and it's a wild pass out of bounds. Nearly goes into the crowd. And that's what we've seen from these Lady Braves today. I mean, you know, the Lady Bulldogs is playing such great defense that the Lady Braves make a mistake. And when they pass the ball, they don't know who is there. Jones driving down to Evans. Evans, turnaround hook. Beautiful move. And she gets her own rebound despite the miss. And, and another, another one. one. And oh, my goodness. And she'll get the foul. Look at the hustle by Alexis Evans right now. I mean, she having a great game, man. They cannot stop her, man. There's no boxing her out. Definitely. I mean, you know, we talk about her points, but just, you know, there's certain things that can change the game, give you a different momentum, give you a different charge. And Alexis Evans and her rebounding tonight, I mean, that just gave them a different charge to this Lady Bulldogs team. Alexis Evans right now playing outside of her classification. She's only a red shirt freshman. That's right, people. She's 6'3". She's a red shirt freshman out of Greensboro, Alabama. And we have a pretty, we have a really, really great player who will more than likely be the heir apparent to Ashlyn Dotson as that primary low post center for Coach Richards. Definitely. And you know what happens when you play a game like that. Don't nobody mess with you. Everybody buys you lunch, Reggie. And can you pop with the rebound, man? <laughs> <laughs> That's what they do. They reward you now. When you play like that, they just like, keep it up. You get this. Bulldog faithful, we have another event here on the campus of Alabama a and University. February 15th, 2019, Dancing with the President and the First Lady at Ernest Knight Living and Learning Complex. Yeah, the car looks like she's getting a jumper back. I mean, hey, Jinx, you owe me a soda. Natalie Collins, no. she is back. She is getting back into her rhythm, and she's having that sharpshooter mentality once again. I'll give you a juice, not a soda. <laughs> juice, <laughs> yogurt, I don't care. Almond milk. <laughs> <laughs> Almond milk? <laughs> oh, yes. Well, you know, Natalie Collins, she shot 40% from the three-point line last year. She was one of the best three-point shooters in the entire conference. So to have her feel that confidence back in her shooting hand, he already got low post dominance right now with Evans, Dotson, and Davis. When you get that sharpshooter back and ready to go for SWAC tournament play, I think it's virtually no contest who's going to win the SWAC tournament at this point when Collins comes back. Definitely. And with Collins with that three, I mean, I think that put the nail in the coffin. And Evans, again, doing what she oh does my best. Oh, goodness. From Natalie Collins. Well, let's hope that the SWAC puts her in the running for SWAT Player of the Week this week. As Evans packed great defense on that last drive by Alcorn, but she'll get called on for the foul. 78 to 66. Lady Bulldogs still lead the Lady Braves. What y'all think about this half, man? Like, Alexis, Alexis Evans having a great game. Alexis Evans and Carnethia Brown showed up in this second half. I mean, I mean, yeah, all the whole half, man, Alexis Evans. I mean, more than the half, the entire game, you can honestly say. I think, honestly, she set the tone and made it clear, we're going to just simply out-hustle you. And there have been multiple possessions where the Alcorn, they would have three or four players under the hoop. They would miss a shot, and would miss a shot. But Evans or Cobb or Kenya probably the only person jumping up rebounding the basketball and it says a lot when you have three players in the low post a rebound is available and yet it's the other team's lone player down there that's actually jumping and putting in effort exactly you know when we talked about earlier what can the lady braves do and you guys just laugh is when i said try i mean this is what i'm talking about Alexa evans just dominating the boards and you know what can these lady braves do i mean Honestly, nothing at this point. Honestly, what can anyone in the SWAC do? Because this is just this is just the tip of the iceberg of the potential of this Lady Bulldog team. We're going to be in for a great season, fellas, and it's just the beginning of it. And you're certainly right, man. I mean, Alexis Evans, she's showing what she can do, and she's going to put some fear in a lot of teams this season. And it's a – oh, the ball is – will go out. We have a foul called on the court. The ball nearly went out of bounds. 
And that's one of the few times where we've seen hustle out this Lady Brave team. You know, these Lady Bulldogs have performed well. You know, it's like we've been saying, you know, once you come to our home, our house, the Bulldog Nate, the Bulldog Nations, the Elmore Gymnasium, once you come to our house, we're going to play you tough. We're going to play you rough. We are going to do anything we can to stop you. And if you think this is going to be an easy win coming into our home, then you're going to be mistaken, my friend. I would rival Elmore Gymnasium with any other environment in the conference. We are arguably the toughest place to play in for anybody in the SWAC. And we're showing that right now. Look at the scoreboard as we speak, 80 to 69. And we're going, to, we're going to waste clock, drain clock. Jones with the basketball, pull up mid-range. Money for Nigeria Jones. What more do you, what more can you expect? You know, right now, just, you know, do I really want a point? Do I really want to ask some more to my stat sheet already? I might as well. And it's some more great deeper staying in. One minute to go in the game. Lady Bulldogs playing great basketball. Over Collins for the three. Woo! And just oh like my goodness. last year when they defeated the Lady Braves, they do it again in typical Bulldog fashion here at Elmore Gymnasium. Do we see Natalie Collins back? Oh my God, it's going to be a rough season for the next team. Guys, we're here. Josh, you said this last year. I'm riding the coattails of it. I'm going to take it as my own. I got us winning the swag. You know? <laughs> I got us winning the swag. I'm saying it. I really think we got a team that can win the swag. And, you know, the Lady Bulldogs, when they look back at the film of this game, you know, they got to know what their strengths was. They got to know what worked to help them get this, I mean, great win. I mean, let's face it, guys. It's, it was over when the games first started. And you're right, man. I mean, not only their strength, know what the small weaknesses is, too. Like, Know what you can do better than the next following game. I think one of the I think outside of everything else, arguably the most underrated factor of this game is A and M just played fundamental basketball. And they Definitely. put up easy shots. They put up shots that made sense. They didn't force terrible shots, they didn't force anything outside themselves and just played the way that they're supposed to play. But the offense isn't amazing though. I mean the first quarter, 21 points. Second quarter, 28 points. Third quarter, 13. Fourth quarter, 25 points. I mean, simply put, they played a great fundamental game. They're going to let Natalie Collins dribble the ball out. Coming back from injury, she looked pretty good. Six points in the fourth. But it's all Alexis Evans and Coach Richards. It's that tough defense. Our Bulldogs win 87 to 69 over the Lady Braves. They improved the four and three on the SWAC and nine and nine on the season. And they're still a top four. They're still a top five team in the SWAC. And at this point, possibly even inching up to top three or top two with the way everything is shaping up in the conference right now. You're right, man. Coming off the losing streak, man. To break this losing streak, they. I think they're ready, man. They're ready to make their way back to the top. You know, this is this team's first win at home of the year. I mean, it just shows just the greatness. And, you know, finally everything is falling into place for these Lady Bulldogs. Oh, my goodness, fellas. It's going to be a fun year. It's going to be a great year. What a great win for our Lady Bulldogs. And now it's time for the fellas to get the clean sweep going for Alabama A&M. We have one more game left on the slate. The second game of the Stubblehead will come up in a few minutes. I'm Reginald Reese with Jalen Herford and Josh Bullard with this A&M broadcast. And we'll be back with you after a little bit. <laughs> 